Yo guys, what is going on and welcome back to another video. In this video, we are doing my Copa America predictions. Now, yes, the Copa America starts next week, so I'm giving myself a nice bit of time to make my predictions early. And with a lot of teams already having friendlies, we kind of have an idea of what we're going to see from a lot of the teams. Um, as you can see, I'm in a different setup today. I am currently in a hotel on a little bit of a mini vacation. I couldn't help but to uh, do a Copa America prediction for you guys. I've just been thinking about it too much and I want to get it done. And I'm on foot mob right here. I have my screen recording ready to go right here on my computer and I have some notes as well just to kind of give you a rundown of a lot of the teams before we go into this tournament. And how this is going to work is there's 16 South American teams that you're used to seeing, but we also have six CONCACAF teams in this tournament, which is the Host USA, Mexico, Jamaica, Panama, Canada, and Costa Rica all taking part in this tournament here in the United States. With all that being said now, let's get right into it. Starting off with Group A, we have the reigning champions and reigning World Cup champions, Argentina, Canada, Chile, who were 2015 and 2016 champions, who actually beat Argentina in both of those finals. One of those was here in the States, actually, and both of those wins were off penalty shootouts for Chile. And then we have Peru as well. Argentina, of course, the reigning champions. It is Di Maria's last major tournament for Argentina. Messi, once he makes his first appearance in the Copa America this year, Messi will have the most appearances for any Copa America player ever. And then he is five goals away from being the all-time top goal scorer in the Copa America, and that's if he scores at least five goals. Now, I fully expect Argentina to go through, and I fully expect them to be top of the group right here, so I'm going to leave that as it is. And then you have Canada, who had just hired Jesse Marsh. It's his first manager position since he's been sacked from Leeds, of course, former RB Leipzig and RB Salzburg coach. Um, a lot of people wanted him here in the coach in the United States after Burr Halter and all that drama went down after the World Cup. Canada have already played two friendlies. They have been thrashed 4 0 against the Netherlands. And then, very like the US, who we'll get into later, had a very strong performance against France, who are one of the best teams in the world, if not the best, with Argentina, of course with a 0-0 draw, so Canada could surprise a lot of people. They have a great core of players like Alfonso Davis, Buchanan, who just got to move to Inter over January, Jonathan David as well, despite not having the best season like he had the season before with Lille. And then, is Kyle Lahren still in this? I'm not sure if he is. Canada is going to be a surprise, I think, for a lot of people, but I don't know if I'm going to have him going through yet. Then you have Chile, who, as I said earlier, are 2015 and 2016 champions. But they're in the middle of a transition phase. They're not looking good in World Cup qualifying currently. They have a great coach who formerly managed Peru back in the 2019 Copa America and kind of overachieved a little bit, taking them to a final, which they lost to by Brazil. I think it was like, I think Brazil thrashed them, if I remember correctly. But they have a very decent coach, but they still have a very aging core with the, with the likes of Alexis Sanchez, uh, Claudio Bravo, Arturo Vidal, who are all... At that age now, where retiring is looking very likely for them, so I don't know if they're going to have the minerals to exactly do well here. And then Peru, who are currently last in World Cup qualifying for the 2026 World Cup, with only one goal scored, which is not looking great. So I don't think I'm actually going to change anything in this, despite Chile probably being the favorites over Canada. I actually do think Canada will finish second and go through. Um, then we have Group B. Now, Group B is the one where I'm questioning a lot of things here because Ecuador, Jamaica, Mexico, and Venezuela. Any one of these teams could win the group, and any one of these teams could finish last, in my opinion. Get into Ecuador. They have a very, very young and strong core of players, I think. You have some exciting players like Caicedo. You have a stupid uh, left back for Brighton. And then you have, what's his name, uh, Acampia, who just had a fantastic season at Leverkusen, almost pulled off a whole invincible season, unfortunately losing out in the Europa League final, but nonetheless still amazing, amazing team. And then they have Kendry Paez as well, who is going to Chelsea, not this coming season, but the season after, who looks very, very exciting for Ecuador. Now, my question with Ecuador is definitely where the goal is going to come from. I don't know if they can rely too much on Kendry Paez with his age and the experience he doesn't have in major tournaments yet, but he's looking very promising for Ecuador. Then you got Jamaica, who are off the field going through a lot, going through a lot of drama right now. Leon Bailey, who 
I don't know if you guys have seen, he's been called up for the Copa America, but he's been posting on his social media that it's like false news and all that, and he's retired internationally. So we don't really know what's going on with that. And then they still have firepower in the attack in the attack with the likes of Mikhail Antonio for West Ham and De, uh, Damari Gray, who I think is now moved to Saudi, if I'm not uh, mistaken. But they have a very strong um, experience in Bobby Reed for Fulham, who was pretty decent this past year in the Premier League, and Pinnock at center back who plays for Brentford, if I'm not mistaken. So Jamaica could pull off an upset here and there and with their uh, with uh, former goalkeeper of the year in MLS, Andre Blake, as well. And Mexico, it's hard for me to speak on Mexico because they're also in a little bit of a weird transition phase, I guess you could say. I don't think they're as strong as you're used to seeing in major tournaments in Mexico are, and I think a lot of Mexico fans will even say that themselves. And I know they're a little bit frustrated with the coach with a player like Santiago Jimenez, who is scoring goals left, right, and center for Fire Nord, but he's not getting the look from Mexico for whatever reason. Um, and then you have Venezuela as well, who is surprisingly in fourth place in World Cup qualifying, but the only South American team to never been to a World Cup. So it's very hard to say with this group. I do think Ecuador are going to finish top. Now, who do I think will finish second? This is a really hard one, you know. Um, I'm actually I'm going to back Mexico despite them not being at their best right now they usually show up for major tournaments despite what happened in the Nations League I think Mexico just have that grit in them to get the results they need and they're gonna it, this is pretty much gonna be like home games for them as well because Mexico fans always 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 show up for major tournaments and I fully expect the crowd to get behind them and push them through and help them get the results they need whether that's with two draws or an important draw with a team like Venezuela and I'm actually gonna have Venezuela in third with Jamaica in the bottom even though that doesn't matter because I don't know if you know with this tournament with only four groups four teams in each the two top teams will go through to a quarterfinal and that's when it gets to the knockout stages um, from then on out then we got Group C, which is my USA, which is also the hosts, Uruguay, Panama, and Bolivia. Now, we kind of already have an idea with USA. No Serginho Dest, but they have Joe Scali covering that right back position. But there is a lot of questions on Greg Berhalter and his style of play, who a lot of people, including myself, don't believe he should have been rehired. Still no big wins. Um, getting thrashed by Columbia 5-1, which I was at that game and made a vlog on, so if you haven't seen that, check that out, link in the bio. But then they came back against Brazil and showed a very strong 1-1 draw, which shouldn't feel like a win for us, but it does in a way because we showed a very strong performance and considerably the better team out of the two in that game. But there's still a lot of questions to be asked under Greg Berhalter with no big wins under his name. And going into a major tournament at home where both of the games we looked like the away team as far as the crowd. It just has a lot of questions to be asked for USA. Um, I do think they'll go through, but whether that's first or second, we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and talk about Bolivia who I think is an easy pick for the bottom. They are one of the worst teams in World Cup qualifying. I think they're second to last, if I'm not mistaken. They have the most goals conceded in World Cup qualifying with 14, which I don't expect them to score a lot of goals anyway. I think each team should be scoring two to four goals on them. Um, and then you have Panama. Um, Panama don't really have any standout players, but even their coach has come out and said recently, we have no individual talent, but as a core group, we are very strong and can get the results they need. Now, whether they'll go through or not, I'm unsure because you also have a team like Uruguay and Marcelo Bielsa, former Leeds coach, coaching this side, 13 goals in World Cup qualifying, which is the most, and then with the attack, uh, the firepower they have up front with Luis Suarez getting called up again despite his age. Darwin Nunes, who seems to always do well with Uruguay, scoring a hat trick against Mexico. Uh, Valverde in the midfield, who just won a Champions League. I fully expect Uruguay to do really, really well in this group and in this tournament, as they are also second place in World Cup qualifying. 
Now, I do think it'll be between USA and Uruguay going through. Now, if USA do top the group, I think it's because they're going to draw Uruguay and have a better goal differential. But if I'm being realistic, I do think Uruguay is going to finish top of the group with USA in second going through the quarterfinals, Panama in third, and Bolivia in fourth. Now, I will not be surprised if Panama somehow pull an upset draw against USA or something. I hope I'm wrong in saying that because I will be at that game. So be on the look for that. Now we get into our final group, which is another exciting group in my opinion, with Brazil, Colombia, Costa Rica, and Paraguay. Now, starting off with Brazil right here, there's a lot of questions to be asked for Brazil in my opinion. I know they're technically one of the favorites to win this tournament, but in my personal opinion, I have a lot of questions. I'm not convinced with this team personally. In my opinion, I said on Twitter, or X, whatever, and I got a lot of stick for it, that I said I think this Brazil team is very mid. Now, I'm not saying they're mid as far as um, the players they have, because they do have a lot of quality in their side, but as far as a core team that play together, this is the worst Brazil team I think I can remember in my lifetime, maybe the 2010 phases, um, but this Brazil team is just not clicking despite the individual talent they have with the likes of Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo, uh, Bruno Grimares, uh, Marquinhos, all these other guys that play for Brazil. I'm just not convinced with this Brazil side. And there's a lot of questions to be asked of Vinicius Jr., who only has three goals for Brazil. Um, when I watched them play against the USA, everything was being played through Rafinha and Rodrigo. And Vinicius was very, very quiet until that second half, where Joe Scali pretty much shut him down almost the whole game. Shout out to you, Joe Scali. I'm just not convinced of this Brazil team, despite having a young, upcoming talent who is going to Madrid, which is Indrik. Um, who I fully expect to have a breakout tournament with this Brazil team, despite what I'm saying. But um, Brazil, as I said with Vinicius Jr., I'm asking a lot of questions because he hasn't necessarily stepped up for Brazil, and he looks to be the favorite to win the Ballon d'Or. And if he wants to win the Ballon d'Or, he needs to put in a very solid tournament at this Copa America and step up for Brazil, especially with no Neymar, who is still recovering from an ACL injury. There's just a lot of questions to be asked for this Brazil team, in my opinion. Now we move on to Colombia who I was very impressed with against USA. Um, I don't know how Colombian fans will feel about that USA game going into it, whether they expected to dominate us like they did, but I was so impressed with their high press. They knew whenever we made a mistake, they were going to thrash on it and beat us, which they did 5-1. When you have players like Luis Diaz, who was very skillful, run at you type player to create chances constantly and same with him as Rodriguez despite him as Rodriguez not playing for a big club anymore he's still a very key core player in that Colombian side and everything is played through him his creative ability on the ball is absolutely ridiculous finding the tight spaces and the pockets for a pass to break loose with players like Luis Diaz it was crazy seriously and Colombia who are third in World Cup qualifying and Luis Diaz, who had a breakout tournament in 2021, I fully expect to do the same at this tournament, honest with you. And with that being said, I'm actually going to have Colombia in first, Brazil in second. And despite Costa Rica and Paraguay uh, being in this group, I uh, just don't really see a lot for them. Paraguay only one goal in World Cup qualifying, which is not great whatsoever. Um, they might have an upset draw against a Colombia or Brazil, but I do not expect Costa, uh, Paraguay to go through. And then Costa Rica, they just don't have they don't have the team that will pull off upsets anymore, if I'm being honest with you. No Keeler and Avaz in that squad anymore, but they do have Joel Campbell up front. I feel like he's been around forever, former Arsenal player. Um, I'm actually going to have Paraguay in third and Costa Rica in fourth, as I said earlier. Not that it matters, but that's just how it's going to be. Now we're going to move into the knockout phases where, as I said earlier, if you don't know how this tournament works, the top two teams from each group move on to the quarterfinals, and then from then on out is just knockout games. Now, the first knockout game we have here is Argentina-Mexico, which is a rematch from the 2022 World Cup. Uh, Argentina won 3-1 with Messi scoring a ridiculous goal. But as I said, Mexico is in a little bit of a transition phase here. Argentina, I have no doubts, are going to win that game. Ecuador versus Canada. That's going to be a very good game, in my opinion, if this does happen. Both teams looking for something to prove. Canada, of course, one of the hosts for the 2026 World Cup. And Ecuador, whose big mission right now is to qualify for the 2026 World Cup. And they want to make a strong impression in this tournament with the players, as I said earlier, Caicedo, Indrik, not Indrik, with players like Caicedo and Kendry Paez. And, um... Yeah, I, despite my 
love for Jesse Marsh because I do like Jesse Marsh and Alfonso Davis. I think Ecuador will win this one. Uruguay versus Brazil in a quarterfinal. Ooh, that'll be a good game, you know. This is tough. I think I'm honestly going to go Uruguay. I'm just not impressed with this Brazil team, as I said. Something about this Brazil team just feels off. I saw an interview with Ronaldinho recently, and he said, I'm not going to watch a single game because there's no joy in this Brazil team. There's no passion. There's no grit. There's no nothing. He will not be watching a single game. And that's exactly how I see this Brazil team nowadays. And it's very unfortunate because we all know what Brazil has and the uh, players they are capable of having and developing, which you see them with the likes of Neymar, with the likes of Pele, with the likes of... Ronaldinho, Rivaldo, Kaká, all these amazing, amazing players. I just don't see a really big standout star other than Hendrick with Brazil. And I've said my opinions on Vinicius Jr. before. He's a very, very great player, but I just don't see the hype around him just yet. I'll be completely honest. He has developed tremendously from his first season in Madrid, but there's still a lot of elements of his game that I just don't see yet. And this video just sounds like a big hate Vinicius Jr. I don't like, like, I don't not not like the guy. I think he's a great player, but I just think there's a lot of elements in his game he's missing. Oh, man. And then we have a rematch of USA Colombia. Do I listen to my head or my heart here? Colombia were so impressive. So impressive in that game the other week that I went to. This is tough. I'm, my head is telling me Colombia is going to win this. But my heart is with the USA. And I think, and with USA expected to get to a semifinal, with a lot of pressure on Burhalter's shoulders right now. I'm sorry, Colombia fans. I have to. Like, any other day that wasn't a major tournament, I would probably pick y'all. Please don't hate me for it in the comments because I have the utmost respect for your, your team and your fan base after what I saw in uh, Maryland the other week. But I have to back my boys and go with the USA here. I don't know what it is. That's just how it's going to be. I'm sorry, Colombian fans. I'll make up for it later in the video, I promise you. You'll see why. Now we have the semifinals, which is Argentina and Ecuador and Uruguay versus USA. Going into the first semifinal, it is Argentina versus Ecuador. As I said, Ecuador have a very exciting team, but I don't think you can deny Argentina and Messi, despite Messi playing in MLS. He is still the most important player in this Argentina side. And with the attacking power they have, with the likes of Julian Alvarez, Di Maria, Alexis McAllister, McAllister, oh, what the heck, Alexis McAllister, Latara Martinez, this Argentina team is just too strong, and I fully expect them to be in the final. Now, the last semifinal is Uruguay versus USA, who are going to be playing in the group stage already, but this semifinal is big, USA and Uruguay. Oh, man, again, head over heart here. If anything happens in the group stage, I think USA will get a draw against Uruguay, but this Uruguay team is so strong. I mean, the stats show themselves as well, but I think USA could win this game. I really do I really do think USA can win this game, especially if it's a semifinal, which is crazy. But I've already pulled an upset against Colombia with them, and this is, a, this is almost every USA player's second major tournament. I'm not counting the Nations League and the Gold Cups. This is only their second major tournament other than the 2022 World Cup. But this Uruguay side, uh, it's got to be Uruguay. I got to be real realistic here, honestly. Um, oh, yeah, there's a third place game, which I'll get third place, bronze medal, uh, Ecuador, USA. I'm not going to get too much into that. I do think USA could get third place for that, despite Ecuador's firepower. Despite the young talent and excitement around this Ecuador team, I think USA could get a good result and get third place, which I think a lot of USA fans, including myself, will take as a third place in this Copa America. Then we have the final, Argentina versus Uruguay. Pretty exciting final, um, but I think Argentina will pull through this, no problems. I think they'll go back to back. Three major tournaments in a row, just like we saw the Spain team from Euro 2008, 2010 World Cup, and Euro 2012. Or technically, would this be the fourth major tournament? Because they won that final Lissima thing against Italy. So, I don't know. But, yeah, I think Argentina are the favorites to win this tournament. And I do think they will win the tournament. Now, guys, I'm going to get into some other stuff here. I'm going to get into my top goal scorer, the best player, the best goalkeeper, the best young player, the biggest surprise or the dark horse, if you will, and the biggest flop. Now, with Argentina winning here that I have predicted, I think their top goal scorer is going to be Lionel Messi. 
Um, as I said, despite him playing in MLS, people can say what they want. He's the best ever player to play this game, best ever player in the world, in my opinion. And he is the key to this Argentina side. I think he will be the best player and the top goal scorer. So there's two of my Argentina ones right there, which will go to Lino Messi. And with Argentina um, getting to the final, I'm also going to triple up on them, or quadruple, however you want to look at it. And their best goalkeeper is going to be Emi Martinez. He's shown his quality. especially He had his breakout in that Argentina side in the Copa America back in 2021. And he's been an absolute insane goalkeeper since then. And he is the best penalty stopper in the world, in my opinion, as a goalkeeper. So if Argentina go to a penalty shootout for whatever reason, that's the one goalkeeper you're going to want in your penalty shootout for sure. Now, my dark horse for this tournament is Colombia. Yes, I had them go out in the quarterfinal to USA, but I, as I said earlier, I was listening to my heart over my head. Um, I will not be surprised if I see Colombia get to this final. Seriously, if Colombia beat the USA or whoever they have in the quarter, they could beat Uruguay in the semifinals if it is Uruguay or Brazil. I think Colombia could beat any single one of these teams, including Argentina, genuinely. Um, so they are my dark horse. If, to be honest with you, if Argentina get knocked out for whatever reason, my bets are on Colombia despite having USA here. I think Colombia definitely can be the team to win this whole thing despite not having won a Copa America since 2001. This is the most exciting Colombia team I think I've seen. Despite Jemez Rodriguez's age, everything clearly is still played through him. And Luis Diaz is still an exciting player. And they have a bunch of young players and developed players from goalkeeper all the way up front. This The Columbia side is just very exciting. So I think they can make a deep run in this tournament. Despite what I have predicted, I think they can win the whole thing, if I'm honest with you. The biggest flop is Brazil. I think that's not surprising from what I've already said about Brazil. I just think there's a lot of things missing in that Brazil side that just... On paper, they're a very good side. Um, despite no Neymar or no Ederson with injuries, they still have a very good side. But as a team, they just don't seem to click. And I don't know what it is about that Brazil team. They just don't click. Some When I watch them play, they don't excite me. They don't get the results I think a lot of people expect from them. So I think that's going to be my biggest disappointment. But the best young player, I will give Brazil credit for. The best young player at this tournament that I predict is going to be Indrik. Um, with his mo uh, move to Madrid happening this summer, I think there's a lot of hype and excitement around him, and deservedly so. He looked absolutely amazing, especially when I saw him come on against USA. And Indrik has already shown his quality with this Brazil national team already scoring against teams like England and Spain and Mexico. Indrik is a very exciting player, and there's a reason why Madrid signed him. Um, I think he's only 17 years old. If he's not the breakout star as far as the young player, it could be Kendry Paez for Ecuador. Um... But Indrik has shown his quality, and I think that's the number nine Brazil have been missing for a long time. For a long, long time. Indrik can definitely be that nine striker that Brazil have desperately needed. Um, but yeah, guys, that is my predictions for the 2024 Copa America. As I've said already in previous videos, and I'll say it again, I will be at a few of the Copa America games. I will be at the opener for Argentina versus Canada next week. I will be at USA versus Panama in the group stage, and I will be at the semifinals in Charlotte. So hopefully... I get to see either Argentina or USA again in the semifinals because if you guys don't already know, despite me pulling for the USA, I'm a big Messi fan, which is why I'm going to the Argentina game to see Messi play. Um, so yeah, guys, I'm super, super excited to share those videos with you guys and do match day vlogs on them. Let me know what your guys' predictions are for the Copa America this year because I want to see what they are. Let me know what you think of my predictions and what you think is absolutely right and absolutely wrong. I would love to know. Um, as always, guys, subscribe if you haven't already and like the video. And I will see you all in Atlanta for the Copa America. See you guys.